Oh, so it's for the recording. Yep. Okay. You're good. Okay. Oh. You're good. You're good. Forgot. I don't know if you're going to want to record this, honestly. <laughs> um, so what I tried to do was just gather... Gather all the basics in one place. Um, and I was talking with Donkin on the way here. Like, why, why do we want to have an understanding of music theory? Um, because one, I mean, obviously, you want to gain knowledge in your field, your skill. But this, this is where you learn how to memorize music. Um, this is where you can transpose on the fly. If your vocalist can't play something in B, you need to lower it a half step. Um, now, you guitar players have your capo. But for the piano, it's like, well, then you can on the fly just change a key without even thinking. Um, vocalists, that's how you're going to learn how to do correct harmonies by knowing correct music theory. So there's there's lots of aspects to it. I mean, it goes vastly beyond that, but that was what I was thinking of in the car. <coughs> um, but for those of you who know all this stuff already, sorry, this is gonna be a review. <laughs> so our music in our Western culture in this era is based on what we call the major scale. There's There's many more scales than that, but that's what we all our pop culture music is based on. So when I say a major scale, we all know what that sounds like. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, da, right? But, um, do, sorry. <laughs> um, there is a pattern to figuring out any scale when you start on any note. Um, and the pattern is on that second page where it says constructing chords. Underneath that box, it says major scale. And we have those W's and H's for whole steps and half steps. On the guitar or on the piano, are you? I'm just making sure it's up. distance between each note on a keyboard, whether from the, um, you have the black keys and the white keys, that's all a half step, right? We all get that on the guitar fret, half step. So for a whole step, you're doing two half steps, yes. So for the major scale that we're basing everything off of, the pattern is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And if you know that, you can figure out any scale in any key. Um, and so that's where we get to the first page of major keys and their chords. <clears throat> this is the paper that. I'm sure that most of you are aware that when you play worship songs, we basic, basically are playing most of the time four chords but there's far more than that, and that's what you have here. In fact, we've had a few, few new songs, Gratitude being one of them, or adds a few of those interesting ones, so it breaks things up a bit. Um, End of Gratitude, how many people have trouble with those last chords? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How about vocalists trying to hit the vocal note of those last chords? Yeah, we struggle with that a little bit? Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so this, to me, is so important, like if you can memorize this, this is so key, I feel like, for us in, in memorizing music um, and understanding what chords you will find in a song so that you don't have to be glued to a chart the whole time. Because that's one of the, the goals, uh, I would say, of this portion. When you're leading worship, that you don't have to be like this the whole time. You want to get to a place where, where you can focus on what you're singing. Not that you can't use a chart, but that, I would say, is, a, is one of the, the major goals that we would have for learning music theory and understanding the chords you're going to find. So for each note in that scale, we have seven notes in a major scale. Each note, then, corresponds to, the, to a chord. 
And so you will find in every major scale three major chords and three minor chords that correspond to that key. And then there's that funky seventh one, which is a diminished. How many people know what a diminished chord is? Yeah. Which um, we don't really use very much um, in modern music. So instead, we've, re we've replaced it. And if you see that alternate seven chord, that's what we've replaced it with <clears throat> to make it sound more modern. Um, how do you want to, uh, how many people are, do, do the Nashville number system? How, so be, be confident in this. If we say Nashville number system, do you know what we're talking about? Raise your hand. And you just raise it high. Raise it high if you know what we're talking about. Okay. Take the word Nashville out of it. The number system. What is the number system? Let's explain that because if you understand the number system off this chart, you basically can do any key for a worship song if you understand the number system. Why is it called the Nashville number system? Because basically if you're a recording artist or um, a musician in Nashville, you're gonna go into a recording session and they're gonna hand you um, a chart that has numbers on it. Not so much notes, but numbers and the timing on that uh, chart. And they say, okay, we're gonna try this in E flat. And then the musician has to know the number system. Okay, we don't like that, doesn't work, let's go to G. And that's what the number system is. They don't have chords, they have numbers. So what is that? Now you can build off that. And that well, and that's what we have, if you see at the top of the sheet, it's numbered for each chord. And so for each key, there's that corresponding number and the chord. So obviously if you're in the key of C, the number one chord is going to be your C chord. That's your tonic. That's your root chord. And then your two is always going to be, well, not always, mostly going to be a two minor. So that would be your D minor. And you go on down the line. So if you, you know, worship music is basically the one chord, four chord, five chord, and six minor, right? I'm sure you all play G chords, G, C, D, E minor, right? Well, you can do that for any song knowing that number system. If I'm in the key of E flat, I know that my one, four, five is gonna be E flat, A flat, B flat, with a C minor. And I can do that for any key. And so we find um, oftentimes when we're playing guitars together, we'll play in different shapes. And so if he's like, what's the chord? I, I can just call out the number and he knows what shape he's playing in and he can figure out that chord. And so you can do that with um, any, any song, any instrument, and it, it helps you transpose in your head. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, for guitar players, it even gets, you might say, a little simpler. And it's actually maybe a, I'm not gonna say a, a danger spot, but maybe a rut, because you start to recognize patterns on your neck, where the one is here with the chord, then the, then the four is here, and the five is here, and the six minor is here. So it makes like a little L on your guitar neck, here, 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 and here. And then you realize, oh, if I just, you know, use a capo and move that up, that pattern stays the same. You don't even need to know this. You get stuck in a rut because you're just playing by patterns. And it's kind of, it becomes a very cheater way to play guitar. You can end up playing in a lot of different keys because you understand these different patterns of the way your chords are on the neck. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it can, be, it can be a help. It also can be a crutch because you don't end up learning the essentials behind that. And that's where I find myself in. I get so comfortable in the pattern that I get behind on this stuff. Yeah. And then she's smarter than me. No. <laughs> I do feel like as pianists, how, how are you going to say it? We have more of an um, upper edge in that because we're dealing with the whole keyboard and don't have a capo. Unless you hit the transpose button, which I would, I'm so scared to do that. I don't know why I would do that. Because <laughs> if you hit the wrong number, it's got, not going to be pretty. Um, <laughs> yeah, that would be one of those worship fail moments. <clears throat> Although we did have a moment at St. Pete where he forgot to take his capo off and he started playing the song and I could see that, but I didn't know how to like catch his eye and be like, 
hey. So we had to stop the song. <laughs> like, hey. Come on, you get, you get caught up in the moment, right? <laughs> Jesus is there. And the capo stays on. I'm like, I can just imagine as soon as the band starts playing, it's going to be real bad. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah that's bad. Yeah. yeah, there's some of those, um, what, what's the song? Da, na, 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 Reckless Love. Yeah, Reckless Love. The, so many worship fails where the electric guitar player doesn't match up with the band. That's a great one. Go look at the band crash on that one. Different keys. So good. Oh, man. Talk about moving. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to, it's really hard to like just do an overview of theory in this way. When I get to the piano part, I'll be able to explain how I utilize this, but I'm not sure how to um, explain it. Well, so let me, let me just, let's drive this home. Every hit song is written off three chords, one, four, and five. Just drill that in your head, one, four, five. The key of C, super simple because there's no sharps or flats. So the C is one, D. No. Uh-huh, one, C. Um, C, and then you count up the scale. Oh, F, I thought four, you were D chord, sorry. Oh, no, sorry. no, 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 I'm That's just saying you count, count up the alphabet. If you know the alphabet, you win. C, D, E, F, there's your four chord. Your five chord is G, so what's your one, four, five for the key of C? C, F, G. C, F, G. Um, and now you can follow the chart and go down, and as soon as you understand scales just a little bit, you can figure out those chords um, based off the one, four, five thing. And all of our, most of our worship music is one, four, five, six minor. She already said it. One, four, five, six minor. One, four, five, six minor. It's like, that's just what it is. Yeah, you'll have 90% of the music yeah. down. And so learn to visualize your chord charts with numbers and maybe make it a practice. Um, it, how many of you use written chord charts? Some people still use written chord charts. How many use you using iPads? Everybody use iPads? Well, see, that, that, that's a crutch right there, too, because all you do is just hit the little top, change the key, and your, your work just got <laughs> done for you. Um, years ago, uh, when I was in high school at Mariner's Church in California, um, I didn't gel with the youth group. Um, I just wasn't cool. But the worship leader in the main sanctuary, um, dude, I got made fun of so bad in high school. It like messed up my psyche. Um, but the worship leader in the sanctuary said, why don't you come play guitar with us? But he was like virtuoso piano, like Pavarotti guy. Um, wait, Pavarotti's a singer. singer. Yeah, um, you get what I'm saying. So he'd create all this music at the time. It was um, um, Hosanna integrity music and stuff like that. And he would take their songs and then right before we walk out, go, that key didn't work. We need to change the key to this. And I'd sit there with a piece of paper. We're going to go on stage, and I'm playing guitar. Oh, snap. Number one chord, every G turns into a <laughs> D or what. And I'd have to do it, and I'm penciling in and crossing out all my notes just in time for church is starting and put it up on the chart, and now i got to go play it. And I just, that, that was good lessons for me forced me to keep up with with the um, with all of that. So, how do you how do you like practice this stuff? What's a good way to? I pick a song. Great are you, Lord, and try it in every key, like playing in every key without using your capo or moving anything around. See if you can just get the chords. It's like. <clears throat> memorizing because then you will start to recognize a pattern in your songs and that's part of what makes memorizing so easy is there is you can hear that's going to go to the root i know that's going to be the one chord you can hear when you there's going to be that minor change and so it just helps you um, to memorize your music and understand it more um, for me what helped me memorize this is when i started playing guitar with him because we wanted to do different voicings on the guitar, if he's playing a song um, in E, and I wanted a different voicing, and I would capo up to the key of C, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna write out the chart like that <laughs> for every song. So I'd be looking at the E chart and then transposing in my head to the key of C to do the C shapes. And that's 
that's what solidified all this to me. And the thing is, I, I know a couple of you play classical piano and chord charts are new. That's where I started. My first time in a band, I'm like, I don't know what to do with this stuff. I, give me the sheet music. I actually tried to like make my own sheet music. <laughs> Didn't work. Um, and so all this stuff that I had been taught by my piano teacher in all my years of classical piano, it's like, oh, I actually kind of need to know that. <laughs> and all of a sudden, as we started getting more involved in, I started getting more involved in worship, all this stuff started making sense. I'm like, I get it. Now I, I couldn't understand how guys would sit there and just like sit down and start playing without knowing the song and start doing improv stuff. I'm like, I could never do that. And now I'm like, oh, I get it. It makes sense. Once you know your scales and the, and the chords you will find, the seven notes that you have to work with in a song, you can play anything. Um, That's good stuff. I don't know. Again, I feel like I feel like when I want to... I explain how I approach piano. It'll probably make more sense. Um, um, so does, out of, out of this group, do you guys ever just, on your instrument, whatever that instrument is, do you just <coughs> practice scales? Is that a thing still? Some of you guys do? Scales? Um, that's, a, that's a very useful tool. It's training your fingers <laughs> where to go, and especially for guitar. I mean, you have trouble with the pinky. Um, grabbing pinky notes. Uh, you got to train that bad boy to do what you tell it to do. And scales help you do that. <laughs> Is that funny? Oh. <laughs> My dog here has no pinkies. You <laughs> <laughs> did that? <laughs> wait, wait a second. You just got me, bro. Sorry. <laughs> you just, I guess so. That really got me. Wait, for, <laughs> for real. Yes. For real. <laughs> for real. For real. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Let me see that. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. Well, people play instruments with their toes, so. Um, yeah, so besides him, you gotta tell your pinky what to do. Wow. So, scales, scales not only help you understand the theory, but it helps you move on your fretboard, move on your keyboard. Ooh, um, whatever instrument you play. So, Brendan. Scales are good for singing too, right? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a, since you brought that up, the vocalist tendency is to scoop notes where you, instead of hitting the note exactly, but to scoop into it and kind of flow into it, that, that starts flowing, uh, it sounds very pitchy. So when you learn how to sing notes and hit them spot on, it tightens up the vocals so it, it's, they're not swimming all around through odd pitches. Um, yeah, and like he mentioned, you were talking in the car, for vocalists, remember, unless there's an accidental in your music where like you're in the key of C and they throw a D major in, which happens, but not very often. Most of what we sing is these, the first section here of these chords. That means you have seven notes to sing. <laughs> But if you're following the melody and you're just trying to like um, do a third or a fifth with the melody, you're gonna hit notes that are not in that key and it's gonna sound dissonant. Um, so by knowing the scales and knowing the notes that are available to you and you can you know, pluck it out on a keyboard, your harmonies will be much tighter and in the right key. <laughs> um, tell me if you can relate to this one. The singer that can sing harmonies perfectly without even thinking. Drive you crazy? Some of you might be that. You drive me crazy. Um, harmonies can be learned, like to sing harmony can be learned, but then there's some people that just got it. And as you learn harmony singing, uh, the, the tendency is to sing some of those dissonant notes. And that's what she's saying, because you kind of follow the melody Exactly, and then those dissonant notes stick out. Um, when you hear them and you, you start to be aware of them, they drive you up the wall. And it's like, it's just bad. It's like, that's dissonant, that's not in the chord. So for you singers, learn what those dissonant notes are and you'll learn to actually sing chords, not follow the melody. Does that make sense? So sometimes your harmonies get very easy where, you, where you're singing the same note that's in the one, four, five chord, 
and the same note crosses over to each one and you just sing the same note. And you're singing a chord while the melody is doing the movement. And it's actually like that uh, near God to Thee, they were doing a lot of that um, in that in that recording. So, um, uh, yeah, and that that's an important thing for vocalists, dissonant notes and yeah. It's like fingers on a chalkboard when you hear it. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I don't know, do you, have, do you have any thoughts on music theory? Just the importance of the number system for communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, super helpful. Yeah, super helpful. Um.